You look good too, mama. So I decided to do like a, you know, grunge inspired look for <laughs> the runway tonight. I used to plan for it and then I realized it's better to dress differently than the category because what if you're giving notes about the girls on their looks according to the category and you are dressed worse than them, so like, Down. you know what I mean? Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, I literally was so excited and then I was like, <laughs> yeah, I could have been in the bottom for this one. <laughs> so that, that's why I went a complete opposite route. So like instead of serving dark, I'm serving rainbows and unicorn and in heaven. But anyway, she is my glam slam sister as well as my drag race sister. Please welcome Olivia Lux. Oh, what's up? What's the tea? Make opinions. Often at times on bootleg opinions, we're talking about the queen's looks, but we never really talk about the smell. So in this video, I want to share with you one of my favorite fragrance brands out there, Dozier. And I'll turn it a fair way to fragrances. What is that? They take luxurious and high-end fragrances and reproduce these famous brands that are $200 to $300 to just $29 to $59. I myself prefer something sweet and fruity and a little bit something earthy too. Which is why today I received the woody sandalwood as well as aquatic coconut. And what I love is that inside the box, there's a card that tells you exactly what's in the bottle. The ingredients, what it smells like, and the inspiration. For example, the aquatic coconut is inspired by one of Mason Margiela's fragrances. That is amazing! I need some too! The bottles are so chic and minimalistic looking, so if you're ever having a night out, just drop it in your purse and go. Come on out! It's travel size friendly! Let's try the Woody Center Wood together. Very earthy, very musky. Smells just like the original. I really love this. Now, let's try the aquatic coconut together. Very sweet, very coconutty, very fresh. I'm gonna wear this this weekend. I'm gonna sign up right now. So what are you waiting for? Sasha your way to the link in the description and get yourself some dozier fragrances. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, but I promise you, you won't be needing it because you'll be loving it as much as I do. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me, you ha This is so much fun. Of course, we're always welcoming people to our cult, girl. So welcome to the family. Yes, yes. You know I love talking about Drag Race. Okay, so what do you love especially about Drag Race this season then, since you love especially talking about Drag Race? Because some of these queens, they come on, they're like, girl, I could give two But meanwhile, I'm like over here very, like, very passionate about these queens. <laughs> There's this guy that I used to date, he watched my videos, he's like, why are you so passionate about drag? I was like, it's what I do and what I love. So back to you, Olivia. Honestly, I love that. I think it's getting back to the nostalgia, right? And this like kind of community aspect of Drag Race, but also the cuntiness and the girls this season, they are not holding back. I'm really feeling season 16 too, not just because of the nostalgia, because the fact that the, the there's less rigory. So it's more fair. So for me as a viewer, when watching it, I'm like, okay, I agree. So it feels like it's taking me on a good journey. Does that make sense? And I do agree. There's a great sense of community and sisterhood in this season, especially. And I think that with Drag Race, it's each year it goes on since season probably 13, your season, right? Um, I hate to bring your season up because your season was the <laughs> pandemic season. But I think that during this pandemic and afterwards, the queens are a little bit more of a sisterhood. They support each other more because there's just so much difficulties and obstacles outside of drag that we need to support each other. Mm. And someone always asked this question during the viewing. They always ask like, do you keep in touch with your seasons? Sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> do you no, keep in touch no, with your so season good. 10 yeah, sisters? Yeah. My answer is like, not really. I feel like a lot of the queens, after it shifted from Loco to VH1, there's a sense of just watching out for yourself and not mm. really caring about the other cast members. Because oh, you trying the to shift preach from Loco. Tonight. You yeah, I am. Tonight, because you are. if this drag shit does not work out, I'm working at a church as a reverend, okay? So it shifted from logo to VH1. So I don't know if the experience is different for you or not, but like my season, everybody was out for blood for each other because it was a huge demand of who you are as an artist and as a public figure. So everybody was just out for themselves. But since season 13, as it goes on each year, the queens are getting tighter and tighter, and which is something I really love to see. Honestly, Altino Shade, I realize it has been like four years since I filmed. So yeah. it, it, it it feels almost like a different generation now. Season 16, these girls are not like the generation of girls that I, I did my season with, finally, you know? And I feel like we kind of wait for that moment, you know, where we, weirdly enough, where we graduated, right? So like, yeah. I feel like it has come to that point for me. And I feel the shift. We all feel the shift of, okay, 
It's very unexpected. Girls are coming in fully not produced, like self-produced because they're just like happy to showcase their authentic full self because right now we don't really know what is happening with with the commercial drag world all of it is out there we've seen it all so now we fully get to see these girls authentically be themselves and that's why i feel like this season is so much fun because there's no more self-producing from this point on Drag Race, and I'm watching all the other versions and iterations, the versus the worlds as well. <laughs> to piggyback off of what you were saying, I feel very passionately towards this season and these girls specifically because of that. So thank you, season 16, for bringing it back to what it kind of used to be. And everybody that worked on it, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. The majority of them are just happy to be there. For instance, a mandatory meeting, great example. Geneva Carr, another great example. Like, Maya too, you know, they're mm -hmm. put on by the judges and the fans and like the castmates too for saying that their drag is not great enough, but they don't care. They're just having a good time. They're still walking into the workroom every day with a smile and just happy for the experience. Girls that are still there are really showcasing their talents and deserve to be there. I think it's mm -hmm. a great testament though that we're also celebrating those like Mirage who Baby, from, from day negative three, I was a Mirage stand from when I <laughs> visited Piranha back in my season when she, you know, was auditioning for, for her season. I think it's great to see those types of queens celebrated as well, just as much, sometimes even more because they had left the competition. I, I, I think we need to do more of that uplifting and like really taking a hold of the artistry and like why we all decided to do this to begin with is to have fun and to and to like relate to other people you know to be a community and to find ourselves in the art of drag of drag but i <laughs> love drag why would i be looking so good the way i am tonight if i didn't love this sh she's horny and she's looking for a man that's why Something with the producers or the cast members are doing really successfully this season is making us, the viewers, fall in love with them and growing on this journey mm. with them, too. Really great storylines this season. You have a really great point. You know, when I was at the season 16 premiere party, which I saw you at, and we took really cute pictures. Which you did uh, not reshare, but it's okay. Which I couldn't find the photo. <laughs> I didn't take those photos. Those were on your phone. Those were not my photos. I reshared it from another person that took it of us. So I tagged you because I was nice. I was like, okay, you know, me and Olivia were hanging out and then you just clicked the heart button and that was it. And that's fine. No, time out. We were, we were also with Vivacious. Our photos might be on her phone. Mm, got it. So you want to share the photo with me in it, but not with Vivacious in it. No, no. Wow. You Olivia's are, preaching you, about love wow. and now she's all about being shady. <laughs> I will pull up the receipts. You did not tag me in the photo with us. Let me pull up Olivia Lux and let me go to DM, girl, because this is about to get okay. petty, honey. That's for the Patreon, baby. That's for the Patreon, baby. We about to give you some coins for that. I did tag you in this beautiful, gorgeous photo. Look at me and you. Oh, wait, where's the photo at? Where's it? You didn't even tap a heart back. That's a video, number oh, one. Oh, actually, yeah, it's a video. It's, it started moving. <laughs> But anyway, back to Drag Race. Who are you? <laughs> Who interesting, are... interesting. <laughs> but back to Drag Race. Who are you rooting for on this season aside from Nymphia and Safira? <laughs> Got it, nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you gooped gag they gutted me. You shouldn't have done that. All Tino Shade, Nymphia is a bitch mom. I live for her. And Safira is a former Miss Paradise, which is a pageant that I won right before my season of Drag Race. She actually just stepped down. And I was at that ceremony with um, Carson Kressley, actually. He was a guest judge. Taking those two out of the running, I guess I would say... Hershey LaCour. <laughs> Got it. So category for this runway is Goth Punk and Wednesday. What do you look for in this category? 
I'm looking for something that makes you want to be like, ooh, that could be on a runway somewhere because it's a design challenge. And I think I know a thing or two about design because I snatched the motherfucking crown on Glam Slam, which was you the did. drag race web series. And I went against you and that was so much fun. We did. Did you know that it's now airing on VH1 too, the website and MTV? But anyway, we first up have Q, who is serving this absolutely amazing, dramatic, out of this world silhouette. It reminds me of the club kit days, the 90s, very Lee Bowery, which is something that me and first is known for. And the hair and the makeup artistry sold this look too. She lined the outfits and lining the outfits gives it more of a surprise element when you're moving down the runway too, because you're not just seeing the raw edges, the hems, and also the inside of the fabric too. Adding an extra two to three yards of fabric really helps sell the look and she did it beautifully over here. The silhouette is right. The mug is right. I love the differentiation with the choker into the makeup. I think that was a really great call because then you don't have to paint your whole body if you have that differentiation, right? She really did that with this look. I really like the black and white and to choose white as your base, that is the thing I was looking for is something different. Everyone chose these dark colors and for her to go ahead and choose that white as the main focal point and she rocked that. Yeah, I really do believe that a makeup change really helps connect the whole look together. Just imagine her doing her signature regular face. It wouldn't have as much of an impact as it does here. I completely agree. It's the details. What does the thing that uh, Plain Jane have? Some potion, immunity potion. I, I, you know, we haven't seen that in a minute and I'm living for it. Yeah, and by week 69, RuPaul will still be asking Jane, <laughs> do you need an immunity potion? No mother, I'm not thirsty. <laughs> Wait, time out. Plain Jane has a different answer every single time. <laughs> I know she said today, it's not spicy or some shit, right? <laughs> it's a different thing. Mama, I'm not thirsty. No, mama, I'm gonna save it for a rainy day. No, mama, it has not expired yet. Girl, she's in her hotel room coming up with slogans. <laughs> I honestly, I live for it. That is the campus thing ever. My girl, Nymphia Wynn. Okay, she is really giving on this runway. I love the shuffle that she did. It really feels like it was intentional. I really love that reveal. I do agree with the judges. I think Michelle specifically said that the reveal didn't show enough of her face. I do think it kind of felt like a second thought to add that additional piece of fabric over the pre-existing headpiece that had the drapery because already it was so effective. Overall, I think this was a really great look, very fashion forward. I loved her presentation. I am completely buying head to toe every last black tool piece of this I do agree with you and the judges that her face was kind of missing too. What I would have done is a different color wig. I would have done blonde, red to contrast the colors a little bit because she is so swollen up with just black on top of black on top of black. The veil was kind of a last minute add in too. I would have just done the headdress and that's it. Or if she's gonna do the veil, have some flowers or something, pretend she's going to a funeral or, you know, a goth wedding. Um, I don't know because as they zoomed in, it was like, tied um even with the mm. feathers i feel like she could have done some details on hiding the edges too i mm. feel like she needs like maybe another hour or two with this outfit but it is good i think it boils down to it's reminiscent of what we've seen from her already last week the japanese buto type of look this distressed tool transparent type of, uh, I guess, nod to almost like a deconstructed Maison Margiela, right? Yeah. We've already got that from her. As soon as she took that black, um, dried up type of floral fabric and said she was gonna make a headpiece that was circular, I immediately thought of her look last week and it was so successful. Yeah. We've kind of already seen that. I love this look. I do think you're totally right though. I think if she had a little bit more time, she could have amplified it in ways of switching up the silhouette, making a storyline. Oh my gosh, that I never even thought of that. And I think that is a really great idea, you had like, this would have been really effective if she had a storyline, but still, mm -hmm. yeah. I wouldn't say hit the bullseye, but like, you know that little space between the bullseye and that next ring, baby, she hit there and it was still very, very good. Yeah, it's still really good nonetheless though. But imagine if another queen made this, it would have been <laughs> applause. 
girl. Right. Maya. Honestly. Okay, next up is Dawn. I love this look. It's very fashion forward, something you kind of see on the runways too. And it had great movement when she was walking down the runway. And then she added the details of the pieces onto her hair to connect into the outfit. I love it. And the elf ears are back, yay! You know, Dawn is so good at silhouettes. That's her thing, proportion, silhouettes. She's really great at it. And it nods to her aesthetic of this kind of earthy, ethereal creature being to fake head to toe, very, very smart. You mentioned earlier like a different choice of hair color with Ninvia. I like this gray. It's not something that I've really seen on her. I'm really vibing with this look. I think what I might have changed is maybe playing around with texture, something to differentiate her waist and what is on her actual body because she has some drapery and some things that are coming out. I feel like it all kind of conglomerates into one thing, but it works for her because she has that kind of like mystical creature aesthetic. Okay. But if I had to be picky, I think that would be like the one thing, but she looks great. I can see your point, but I don't mind it on her because it still looks really good from far away and up close. Really good job. You showed your design skills. More feel love. Okay, first things first, the mug. She knows how to paint. And I really appreciated that when she walked out, I was like, thank you, thank you for also incorporating the mug into what you're selling. I do really like the outfit. We have some pieces that are coming off of her body that look like interfacing. I was kind of trying to see what she was doing. I don't think necessarily it was boned. I think it was actually interfacing the things that we use like inside of like for suiting and things like that. So I really enjoyed that aspect and element of her garment. It's hard to do that and not have hems and seams shown. So she did that really, really well. She didn't just do a mermaid gown. She did a like multi-level that was kind of asymmetric. A few things that I might have thought about design wise, I think of hair and garment kind of going together and her hair was so symmetrical and her mug is so beautiful, striking head on and so symmetrical that it kind of took me out of it when her garment was very avant-garde and asymmetrical. Like when we think of, of RuPaul, when she does that kind of big side swoop thing, oftentimes it's something where there's a big asymmetrical moment going on with her garment. That works because it, it draws the eye here, there, ba, ba. And for this, it kind of gave, and then like, all over the place with her garment. So I think that was a big style thing that I saw with this, but overall, A plus for construction. Oh my God, I feel like I was the only one that notices that about RuPaul whenever she wears like one shoulders and then she has the hair to one side. <laughs> I love this look on Morphine. Morphine is a makeup goddess and she translated that makeup onto this look with the garment. And back to the first look that we talked about, yes, a makeup really can help sell this look. Mm -hmm. I do agree with you, it's a little bit well, yes and no. I like the shapes, but I just think that this side over here could have been a little bit higher and the piece on the hips could have been out a little bit more, just proportionalized. I think it's the proportionalizing that was off for me. But overall, this is a great look for Morphine. She looks splendid in this. And that red lip. Tell me what that is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have compliments at all queens. Next up is Plasma. And you know what this look is kind of giving me? It's giving me the MySpace days in a derogatory way. And <laughs> you know, like some people think that they're punk and goth, but they're not really goth and punk. And this is what it's kind of giving me. <laughs> Woo, girl. This look was sad, I know. <laughs> okay, so I knew that it was doomed from start. And I'll tell you why. Because when she had mentioned trying out different silhouettes and different things that she hasn't done before. There's no time for trying on Drag Race. Do the old reliable. You try that sh before coming. Bob the Drag Queen says, do the hits. That's her phrase. And I love that phrase because baby, do the hits. You know what I mean? What does that mean? If your aesthetic is old maiden type of goth, do old maiden type of goth because we know you can do it good. Style that up differently. Don't do a completely different style. This was completely left field. Yeah. The, no boobs, no shape, 
no hips, <laughs> no boobs too, <laughs> no hips, no tr no heels, but no padding all, either. But, oh, <laughs> child, girl, girl, what is that red, child? It's my boxer. Girl, I feel like my mother, honey, RuPaul in these sweatpants. So the thing is with her that is unfortunate and tragic is that she is so talented. <laughs> tragic! It feels like tragic, right? Like it feels like one of those moments where it's like, damn, when she came out, I was like, no, because it's not only that the execution was poor, the design was not great, and the overall serving of it all was not great. It's that we've seen so much greatness from her the entire season that it felt tragic. Yeah. Listen, my season, season 13, I made it to top five. You always think you gotta switch things up. Show the judges, you know, this is what the vulnerability the judges wanna see and all that stuff. Everybody's thinking about that. But my first instinct and my thought when I got there was, I don't wanna turn my back on my kind of go-to, uh, my weapons against all of that, because it got me this far. And if Plasma's weapons against the entire competition are her musical theater ability and background and that old timey kind of vintage glamour, why turn your back on it? These are things that you've relied on and the judges have not mentioned that they want to see something different from you yet. So why would you turn around and give them something that you're not familiar with? Because that's what they said. That was, that was fully the critique is that it pulled you in a whole bunch of different directions. Right. It's because you don't have a reference point now. And I think that's what we're seeing here is that she didn't have a reference point. What I will say is I feel like if she went with uh, kind of her aesthetic and her references that she does know, I think it would have been more successful. Um, You did bring up something really important and I think that clicked with me too, is for her to do this category as her. Cause her type of drag, whenever I'm thinking about it, right? It's very 1920s, it's very 1960s. It's inspired by a lot of old Hollywood vintage films, right? Classic films. If she comes out punk rock, but as like plasma, but as like someone from like the 60s or the 20s, yeah, I would have bought it. If she would have done her vintage glamour, it would have stood out because nobody else gave that this week. I'm looking forward to seeing Plasma again. She is such a talented girly and she really slayed. Um, I don't know at this point in the program, we able to say she's going. But she slayed up till last week. Yeah. You know, we got to give her a flower. She, if I'm correct, she is a pandemic queen. So she started doing drag only during the pandemic. And it's only been two to three years only. And to have this great run on Drag Race, applause to that. And during the lip sync for your life, she didn't really give up either. She fought till the end. She was giving her all 100% from beginning till end. She did not give up on that stage. So, applause. Great run on this season too. I mean, two wins, girl. She should be very, very proud of herself. Girl, Maya. Okay, I love that she used the little birds. <laughs> Having something to rely on when the garment is not really given what you need to give was a great call for her. She just made some really not so great decisions, specifically around the shoulder area. It kind of feels cut off. The necklace then definitely chokes up the design and don't necessarily love the silhouette in general, the styling, the hair, the makeup. In a design challenge, they're things that are being marked. So it's not just the base garment, it's everything. You know, if she were to have done different jewelry, done an updo, maybe done a different type of makeup with another color lip, it might have made the garment a bit different. I'm not saying it would have saved her from the bottom, but I definitely think these are things that could have amplified this baby. It's a great base garment. How about this? It's a great base garment. We could add something else onto it. Could you imagine a patent leather like coat or trench coat type of situation along with this? Or even just sleeves, something to give it the ooh-ah. I definitely think it needed more and she wasn't able to serve that. I don't think she was even able to serve this because she said, you know, Safira helped her with this. <laughs> As a fellow black queen who loves to see other queens succeed and stuff, this was a hard one for me this week to see her struggle. 
if this was still earlier in the season maybe, this would have been a safe look because it's fine, it's safe, but compared to everyone on the stage, it's a little bit basic. And going back to what you said, Dawn was basically, literally, a dress. But the fact that she added those stuff circling around her hips made it more interesting, right? And even adding the head pieces, she needs more. Maybe like a hat, a witch hat, something over here to extend the look from the body to the head so that it's a full look. Adding on, maybe some gloves would have helped too. Go grab a broom from the workroom or something so that it's not just you wearing a black dress so that there's more of a story to you wearing a black dress. Why are you wearing the black dress? What are you serving? Why is Maya wearing this outfit in this category? Does that make sense? That's what I'm getting with this. I totally agree. For me, it's safe. But out of everyone, yeah, it's bottom two. Also, you know, Shade, something I think about is the resources that you bring to Drag Race. And I notice girls bring more hair than is needed, more like styled, cool, different types of hair. And this is, you know, a fun fact or a tip for any other girly that is gonna embark on the journey of competing. This look would have been extremely amplified if it had a fashion type of hair. Maybe something that were a different color if it were stark, platinum ice white, or if it were a gray like Dawn's hair, something like that in a cool different style. And I also think girls probably dipped into their other runways, you know, for different hairs to be able to pair with this because they're fighting, you know, competing. Yeah. That's what this is about. It's a competition. So to just wear a bust down, like middle part, share looking, throat shake and go is not going to cut it for this. Laura, she gonna do the Cher uh, impersonation again. I'm from Hawaii! <laughs> Moment, I love it. What do you think about Safira helping her? Do you think that that was fair? And would you have helped if you were there? As a fellow Black queen, I would also look around the workroom and see my other Black queens. Nobody wants to be the last Black girl standing. You know what I mean? In horror movies, we don't want to be the first one killed either. So I think there is a level of looking out for each other. Her and Safira are relating on another level that's not just the superficial yeah. lights, camera, action. They're relating on some Black girl magic and I sense it. And I think that's what we're seeing. Beautiful answer. Um, my take on it is that if Safira wants to help, oops, if Safira wants to help, go for it. I'm not here to stop her from helping and I don't think that it should affect Maya's placement and judging either because Safira did help her, but that's what's up to Safira. It wasn't like Safira was held at gunpoint so that it wasn't unfair, right? All right, Miss Plain Jane. I love her references that she pointed out. I think she had really great fashion references. The only thing it kind of gives like elevated drag costume and I still love it. The construction's great. The idea is great. But if she would have just continued down, if she would have even added some straps onto the boots, it would have then created an overall look. This kind of feels like a elevated drag costume, a performance costume. Still very, very well done. Execution, A+. Plus. Yeah. Even design, A+. Plus. I would venture to say the styling was lacking. Love the hair, love the makeup. It feels like it tells a story. I'm not sure what fuck a story, bitch, with the tear, but it's making me feel things. I'm in my water sign era. You know, I, I'm a Pisces. You're in March, right? I'm about to be 30 in a few weeks, you all. Oh my God. When? March 14th. I'm March 1st. Oh, get out! Wait! You're March 1st? It's March 1st right now! Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's your birthday! <laughs> You're my birthday ah! gift! <laughs> Happy birthday, baby! Oh my god! You're my birthday Happy gift! Birthday too. No, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. I don't. I'm one of those people that don't like to celebrate birthdays or mention it because I'm one of those people that believes that every day should be a celebration. I celebrated 365 days. And I always want to encourage people to celebrate every day, like, I hate to say this, like it's your last, but live life to the mm -hmm. fullest, you know, because you never know when tomorrow's gonna be your last. So yeah, that's why I don't really do birthdays. Yeah, celebrate every day like it's plasma on this design challenge. But I'll, <laughs> but I'll, <laughs> ah! but I'll send you a free cameo for your birthday, okay, Olivia? I'm gonna be singing oh to you Oh my God, on March. I'm holding you to it. Um, well, happy 19th birthday. This is really exciting for you and, um, Wow, I'm honored to be your guest on your birthday. This is so exciting. Yeah, because nobody else was available and you texted back and said that March 1st, I'm available. 
<laughs> now, I want that birthday cake. Where is okay. the f cake? Well, I'm not on Cameo. I'll give you a fake bootleg Cameo. So I'll give you a camel toe instead. Um, wow. Back to plain Jane. <laughs> I'm going to give you a camel toe, baby. It's going to be yeah. extra special. Also, want to mention the hair. Something we haven't seen from her yet. I love that it's this dark, cropped, with a widow's peak. Perfect. Your outfit should look like you about to f*** that. It's giving up. Did you see that video with Delta work when she was complaining about a f green couch? <laughs> She was like, why do the gays always say it's giving? It's giving. It's giving this. It's giving that. What do you mean this couch is giving green? And then it cuts to the couch. It's a fucking green couch. What do you mean it's giving green? It's just a green couch. Time out. Do you listen to her podcast? <laughs> no, but I watch the videos that go viral. Delta is so funny when she goes on her rants in the beginning of her podcast. And also, I want to be on that podcast. So what's the tea, honey bee? Do you remember what she said about Black Friday sales? These are not sales. Two cents off. Two dollars off. You know what needs to be on sale? Groceries. Fucking groceries. Have you heard her talk about Olive Garden? So she has this theory <laughs> that before they ask for boxes for you to plate up your food, you should ask for more breadsticks. Why? I don't know about this part. Because you can't ask for more breadsticks after you box up your leftovers and get the bill. Oh, because they think that you are. Did you see the video where she was talking about the table and the <laughs> <laughs> table and the booth? Right, not a booth. I would have said a booth if I, because I specifically said I'm looking for a table. So why are you bringing me to a booth? Honestly, she had a really great point. She really had a great point. This is the first look that came out on the runway, right? When I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's pretty good for a design challenge. I think what could have elevated this look to give us more of a story is maybe she's a dominatrix and then she takes some of the cut-ups of the ribbons that she has used the bottom, tie it, make it like a whip or something, come out, mm. you know, slamming it on your hand. Something that gives me more than you're just wearing a black outfit. Why are you wearing the outfit? What are you doing in that black outfit? Take us to that setting and environment of your in that you're wearing that outfit. Yeah. Last up is Sephira Christos. The hair is teased out, it's giving crazy, it's giving punk, it's giving goth. I think it's a safe look for Sephira. Is it the most exaggerated out there look that she could have created? Probably not, but it's safe. But I think that if she didn't help Maya, I think her look would have been better. Mm. You don't like it. She got away with murder with this one, but I'm gonna let it slide only because of her helping Maya. Yeah. It's a great fabric choice. It translates really well on camera. It does still give goth while also giving the dimension with the white and black. I like the also the black in that center area. Not crazy about the silhouette. Not crazy about how she sold it. It doesn't feel like there's a story there. It kind of just feels like She's kind of being sticky and just trying to, you know, sell it. I just want to see better design. And I know she's capable of it. And that's that's the thing that's kind of like throwing me off. And our favorite look is Q. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, Q. Yes, congrats, baby boo. Q has won a design challenge before and she's proving that she is one of the design girlies period. Now, Olivia, thank you so much for stopping by to give us your official bootleg opinions. Thank you so much, baby. Oh, thank you for having me, Yuha. You know I live for you. Happy birthday again. <laughs> Happy early birthday to you, too. Oh, thank you. Pisces girlies in the house, period. Emotional beings. <laughs> yes, period. problematic queens. <laughs> Bye. I love you, Yuha. Hey, squirrel friends, when one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead. I support you.